Blade Trinity is... Ugh, this movie has so many layers and levels of badness to it surrounding it. It is written and directed by David S. Goyer. And here's your first mistake, movie. I know David Goyer has been behind some uh, movies, superhero movies, that I do like. He's co-written them, or he's been a producer on them. So maybe technically I should like the guy or respect his talents. But whenever there's a movie that he's solely responsible for or that he solely writes on his own, I feel like it sucks. Or I feel like I have major issues with it. He did write the first two films, but I've personally heard both directors mention how much they've had to change and re rework the scripts of those movies. So this third movie, though, he's writing and directing, so this is 100% solely him. In the beginning, you see these vampires, they go to the Syrian desert, and they're looking for a tomb. Dracula's tomb. And I'll admit, this is an intriguing idea. If you're looking for a villain, the ultimate villain, the ultimate vampire for Blade to go up against, it would be Dracula. And given the year that this movie came out in, a uh, reimagining, a retelling, an up-to-date version of Dracula is something that should work. Having him be Blade's biggest foe is an idea that could have worked but clearly it doesn't these vampires that we're following and that and that go to this desert i should talk about them a little bit you have parker posey as danica and i never liked parker posey really at all like every time i see her in a movie she just annoys me she always plays these characters that are annoying and something about the way that she delivers her lines clearly she's a villain here so it makes sense that i'm not gonna like her but as an actress i just never ever respond to her in any way you get calum keith rennie who's an actor that i've seen in a bunch of stuff he plays the character Asher, he's just the third wheel, if I'm being honest. And then you have Triple H! <laughs> Triple H, if you don't know, is a wrestler for WWE. And I think this was his first movie. And I'll be honest, I don't think he's terribly bad. I don't think he's here and like the worst actor or the weakest actor or somebody that stands out as like, hey, he sucks. It's just, it is odd though to see somebody like Triple H in a movie like this because he's just Triple H. Like, I don't look at him and see another character. I just see Triple H with vampire fangs. At the beginning of this movie, you do get a little sense, and this is mostly in the unrated director's cut that I do own and that I do watch if I am going to watch this movie. You get some extra scenes like of that news talk show where those people are talking about vampires or the possible existence of vampires and talking about Blade. This is a little interesting if you're trying to ground this story, trying to have a sense of, hey, what would the news, what would real life people say and how would they react if something like this was real? I always find that interesting when movies try to do that. It just, when you see how dumb this movie is, there's really no point and no reason why this is even here the vampires do have a decent enough plan it just sucks that blade was dumb enough to fall for it where they set him up to track and go after somebody that he thinks is a vampire and he kills this person only to find out and realize that they're a human a familiar somebody that is like a slave to vampires willing to do whatever vampires want in hopes to being turned into a vampire and so this whole murder is caught on camera. Usually when Blade kills a vampire, it's it's done in a way where the vampires evaporate or turn into fire and dust, which is a pretty cool effect. I'll admit that. But here, Blade becomes a fugitive 
for the FBI. Once again, a decent plan because as of right now, Blade has just been a myth. He hasn't been something proven to be real. And so to get the FBI on him, that helps the vampires. It gets Blade off of their backs for a little bit. So again, it makes sense if you're the bad guys, if you're the villains. You see Blade at his hideout with Whistler. And this is a decent hideout. Like they've had different hideouts in every single movie. But this is something that you can kind of go along with. And the FBI easily finds the hideout. And look, you could have had at least half of this movie with Blade being a, a fugitive and Blade on the run or Blade trying to go after the vampires while having the cops on his back. That could have been a, a through line. That could have been a plot. That could have been something that's always in the back of your head every time Blade goes out there that the cops are that much more on him. We could have done more with this. We could have made this a big, huge thing for Blade to have to go through or hurdle for him. But no, you already get the resolution. They show up at the hideout. They find it very easily. Whistler dies, <laughs> which we've already been through this. We've already seen Whistler die in the first movie a very sad and traumatic scene that i thought was played up well and shot well but no the second movie undid that and i didn't like the second movie did that and then chris christopherson who if you're gonna bring him back then bring him back have him be that role for blade have him be that guy or if you're gonna just kill him off again you could have waited <laughs> if you had done an hour long of this whole fugitive thing. Maybe his death could have come later on in the movie and have some weight to it. It just, it seemed like a beat that we've gone through already. It seemed like David Goyer didn't know what to do with his character. So what do you do? You just kill him off early. Blade surrendering himself to the cops and being so upset about what happened to Whistler is, is a moment that I do like. Wesley Snipes does sell it as he's in shock or he's he's defeated he's weak just in the knowledge that whistler is dead it meant a lot to him so decent enough moment and you cut to blade in the interrogation room at the at the police station and he's being interrogated by john michael higgins who is an actor that you normally see in comedies, and so it's, it is weird to see him in a movie like this and to see him bounce back and forth with Blade. It's sort of a payoff to that scene earlier of the news guys talking about Blade, and you think that, all right, if this guy is a psychiatrist or an expert and he's examining Blade, he's trying to figure him out, get inside of his head. Kind of an interesting idea especially after watching Glass recently, and that's kind of what that whole movie is about. You could have played this up more, but no, it's revealed that John Michael Higgins is a member of the familiars. He's he's working with the vampires. Of course, of course, it all has to be connected. It all has to be a big plot and ploy and plan. The vampires show up. Parker Posey, once again, is here to be evil and demean Blade, talk trash to him. And and then our heroes show up. You have Hannibal King, which I admit, it's a pretty badass name. <laughs> I'll get to the character and Ryan Reynolds in a minute, but the name Hannibal King is very cool. And you have Abigail, played by Jessica Biel. They come in, they make the save. A very awkward moment where I watched this movie with the commentary and apparently Wesley Snipes was supposed to walk out of the room in a slow motion scene with these two characters, but Wesley Snipes was not for it and you see that he clearly walks by himself. He got his way when it came to that. Let's talk about Ryan Reynolds, shall we? I love Ryan Reynolds. I do. He's one of my favorite actors. He's consistently funny in everything that he's in. Even in this movie, he makes me laugh, and he makes me laugh hard. There are some jokes where it's clearly him improvising, and it's him on the spot just being himself, having that natural charisma. He works as his own thing. He works as his own character that... He can bring the humor out of anything. The problem is that I don't think his humor really fits this movie. It does take me out every time he makes a joke. Like, I'll laugh, and then I'll stop and think, well, wait a minute. Dude, did that scene really need that joke? Or 
could this scene have maybe been more about the plot, have been more about the character, or been more about Wesley Snipes? It could have. And Ryan Reynolds is always there to do his thing. I don't really blame him. I guess it's mostly whoever casted him, because that's what they wanted for him to do his thing. Jessica Biel is fine. She is. She does what she needs to do. I've never quite been against Jessica Biel in movies. The whole idea, though, that Abigail as a character is Whistler's daughter, I don't like that. I just, I don't. There's, there's a scene where they show her, and of course it's a shower scene, so there you go. But it, it flashes back to the first movie where Whistler tells Blade or tells the story about how his his wife and daughter were killed and it was this whole thing they were killed by vampires and it set him on his path and it, it was meaningful for him only for this movie to then crowbar in extended dialogue that was never there in the first movie they just added it in of whistler saying oh yes and i and i have another daughter that nobody knew about that blade didn't know about blade his best friend the guy that he's been on the road with day and night caring for He's not going to tell Blade that he had another daughter? Oh, for her protection. And she was cast away somewhere. No, no, no. I don't buy it. For a guy that's written all three movies, it's pretty bizarre that you're just randomly throwing this character, pulling this character out of your ass, David Goyer. Wesley Snipes... Look, I've heard stories. I've even heard uh, David Goyer and the other actors in the commentary talk about how hard Wesley Snipes was to work with and how he hated making this movie. He just was not happy with the script. He was not happy that David Goyer was directing the movie, which you can't blame him. <laughs> I wouldn't be happy either. He didn't think he was right for the job and that he didn't know what he was doing. He hated working with his co-stars, which, again... I wouldn't blame them. I think maybe being mean to them is misguided. The anger should have gone more towards the director and producers, the people actually in charge of the project. He he just he was a pain. Supposedly he was a pain. He would sit in his trailer and smoke all day, smoke weed and just not give a f. And believe me, a part of me doesn't blame him. But it just it sucks that a lot of the actors suffered the brunt of Wesley Snipes just being a dick and just being that guy that you probably don't want to work with again. The whole idea of this group, and they're called the Night Stalkers, which I don't know, kind of sounds lame for a name. But you see their hideout, you see their group, which includes Patton Oswalt and a blind... Natasha Leone, who I know has gone on to be on Orange is a New Black and a few other stuff. I'll always know her as the best friend from American Pie. <laughs> and, you know, she's fine. I'm not saying she's bad in this movie, but whenever an actor plays blind, it's always hard for me to buy it. And I've seen other actors pull it off so well that when I think an actor is just kind of eh to being blind, it, it, it yeah, doesn't quite work. Let's talk about Dracula, shall we? Or, as they call him, Drake! <laughs> yes, back in 2003, they called Dracula Drake. And it's even weirder now because, obviously, the artist named Drake. But Dominic Purcell, he is playing Drake. And I, I like this actor... When it comes to Legends of Tomorrow, for anybody who watches the DC show on the CW, I think he's great on the show. I really like his sense of humor and the way how they write his character there. But in this movie, no. No, no. He can't pull this off. I'm sorry. He just doesn't have the presence. He doesn't have the, the experience for me to buy that he's a vampire. He's the original vampire. That he's been around forever. And, and I know they wanted to modernize him. I know they wanted to make him look cool and sexy and hip. But no. 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 Everything about this version of Dracula is wrong. 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 The whole idea for Drake is that because he's a pure blood, uh, he's able to be out in sunlight. So the other vampires that dug him out 
they want to maybe use that blood to make themselves daywalkers as well. Makes sense, I guess. But the movie wants to stop, constantly stop, and have these scenes of Drake going to this goth like vampire store which do they even really have those maybe they do but like everything in the store is related to dracula and you see him looking at stuff the 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 serio count chocula or the the dracula dildos there's no way that that's really a thing i want to see the people who are buying dracula dildos you know what maybe i don't want to see them <laughs> Because they might scare me. So I get the point. They're trying to show that this is what society or the media has done with Dracula. They've watered him down and made him a commercial thing. And this idea pisses him off and he kills everyone in the shop. Idea? Fine. But because this actor isn't really believable, all they're really going for with him is that he's big and he's supposed to be imposing. But just more, more worthless scenes especially the montage and the music video scenes of him walking the streets and just walking around with the effect of everything going fast around him Ugh. visually sure for a music video but for a movie you're just sitting here like what are we doing this is dracula and this is what you have him doing you get a scene where blade chases drake and drake Again, this is Dracula, and when he comes face-to-face -face with Blade, and you're expecting maybe a big fight, or you're expecting maybe when they first fight, Drake beats the crap out of him and and shows his, his strength, shows his worth. No! He runs away from Blade. It's a full, long, like, 15-minute chase scene where it's not even like he's doing this to lure blade into a trap or to bring him to an area where maybe he thinks he'll do better in a fight no he's running away because he doesn't want to fight him or it just it looks like he doesn't want to fight him and he keeps running and running and running into buildings into hallways through people's apartments out the windows i'm like drake stop being a bitch <laughs> grow some balls grow a set and fight this guy you're the main villain and you're already more of a bitch than Steven Dorf, if you can believe that. And the villain from the second movie, which, let's be honest, that second movie had probably the coolest Blade villain that I've ever seen. Drake grabs a baby and, and uses the baby so that Blade doesn't go after him. And then he throws the baby in the air for Blade to catch. And surprisingly, this baby does not cry. There is a scene... And this is a pretty decent idea, I'll admit, where they call it Final Solution. You find out that the vampires have been farming humans. They have all of these humans hooked up to these, these uh, systems and they're, they're farming the blood from them so that it's easier for them to get blood and feed off of people. There was a deleted scene in Blade 1. Where Steven Dorf was doing this, but it was much smaller. And obviously now with the budget, they're able to do this in big form. And so, all right, fine. Decent enough idea. Just, there could have been so much more done with this. It's really just one scene and one reveal. And then they shut it down. Blade shuts it down. And then we move on. Like, we could have made a whole movie out of this. In fact, I think there was a whole movie, Daybreakers, that was pretty much about this. At least they had the right idea. Uh, while Blade and, and Jessica Biel are out, Drake goes to the hideout of the Night Stalkers and kills everyone. I'll admit, again, if this was a better actor, if this was a Dracula that I was uh, scared by, imposed by, this would matter more. Seeing everyone be killed, or actually everyone's already dead for the most part, and Natasha Leone is being stalked, by him and he's pretending to be Chris Christopherson which is weird I don't even know how he knows what he looks like and I also think it's weird that Drake can shapeshift into other people maybe that is an old Dracula ability I don't know I don't care I just think it's weird and this scene is supposed to be more scary because of Natasha Leone has has a has a daughter 
who's also there and in danger and hiding. And for whatever reason, Drake kills everyone except for Ryan Reynolds. Oh, I know the real reason why. Because Ryan Reynolds is a main character and he's not supposed to die just yet. They, they kidnap him and they bring him to the lair. Jessica Biel has a decent scene where she comes back and finds uh, the bodies and finds what happens. And, and Blade has a scene with her that I do like as well where he's telling her to use the anger, channel the anger, and bring the rage out. And she yells. And then you get the obligatory scene of, hey, here's a dead character that just so happened to know that they were probably going to die. So they made a video of all the information that our main characters need to know because they were creating a, a blood virus for the vampires to attack their cells and kill them instantly. Okay, sure. Hannibal King is captured, like I said, and he's being tortured by Parker Posey. This is where you see, the, you find out that Hannibal used to be a familiar for Parker Posey, used to be her slave, and that's just weird. I don't know if I needed that. Uh, speaking of Parker Posey, there was a scene earlier where she has sex with Drake, and I don't know why that scene is there. It just, it's so random, and it's so, are they trying to make Parker Posey seem like this sexy evil vampire especially the reveal that Hannibal King used to be with her am I supposed to be turned on by her in a weird way because I'm not this is also the scene where you see that they're that they're uh that their dog is a vampire and so I guess that's a thing as well there's a creepy moment and I will admit this where Parker Posey tells Hannibal King because he's making jokes the whole time and he's going back and forth and making a joke out of all of this where she says to him, look, I'm going to turn you and I'm going to make you starve and you're going to starve for so long and you're going to be so hungry that you're going to feed on this little girl and and you're going to love it. You're going to love doing it. And there's something about the way how she delivers it and Ryan Reynolds' reaction, like the one moment where he gets serious, that I think the scene works. It is creepy. It is sad. But <laughs> the whole movie should have had this tone. The whole movie should have been at least a little darker with more stakes and more stuff like this. Blade and Abigail make the save because we have a bunch of scenes of, of characters jumping through windows and making the save at the last minute. You get a fight between Hannibal and Triple H, because why not? You have to have a, a fight scene with Triple H doing wrestling moves and power slams and actually beating Ryan Reynolds' ass. Uh, you see Abigail, who I never understood the practicality of this. She's wearing headphones and listening to music as she's beating up vampires and fighting vampires. Don't you need all of your senses? Don't you need your hearing? Don't you need to hear if people are behind you? I know she's trained. In fact, they had the scene earlier where to show how well-trained she is and how smart she is where she pretended to be like a homeless person and she got attacked by vampires and then she killed all of them because, you know, she's a badass. So I guess that's supposed to make it believable that she can wear headphones during fight scenes, but I just, I don't buy it. I don't buy that anybody is badass enough to be listening to music as they're fighting vampires, killing vampires, especially multiple vampires. Uh, Blade has a fight with Drake, and Drake, it's one of those things where for some reason he turns into this creature, and okay. Okay, I guess it's supposed to be scarier, but honestly, he just looks like a big boss battle from a video game when he turns into this creature. He has this sword that's supposed to have some meaning uh, from the, the history and blah, 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 but Blade uh, seems like he easily defeats him. Uh, you see the virus be set out when, when first Abigail shoots it and then Blade sticks him with it. And all of the vampires get infected with this virus and they all turn to ash and they all die. And you have this crappy CGI <laughs> blood go through the air to kill the vampires. And then uh, because Blade is half vampire, there was doubt on maybe this could kill him as well. He was willing to do it. And we think that he's dead. He's laying there and the group just leaves him because they think he's dead. And I never understood this, but we get a scene of Blade's dead body at 
the coroner's office and they're about to cut him open. But then he wakes up and he attacks everyone there. Now, they say that this is supposed to be Drake pretending to be Blade, but there's no real indication watching the movie that that's what's going on. I don't understand. Like, how are we supposed to know that this is really Drake? And if that's the case, are you setting up Drake to come back for another movie? Really? I always took the scene that Blade was just weak and he needed to feed. So he fed on these people and then he was re re-energized and he woke up and he left. Because then you cut right to the scene of Blade outside on his bike and he's just going to go off and be a hero. Hannibal is narrating that he is who he is and going to be who he is and blah, 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 blah. And then the movie ends. This movie is terrible. Awful, awful. It doesn't help that I know about the behind the scenes stuff and how pissed Wesley Snipes was because every scene Wesley Snipes is in with these other actors, you can tell that he's pissed. You can tell that he doesn't want to be there or do anything. But just as a as a story, the writing, the characterization of Drake, all of these characters, it's piss poor. It's not good. I believe, in fact, when this was in theaters, it was PG-13. I'm pretty sure that was the case. And if that's the case, what the F? I know that there was supposed to be a Night Stalkers spinoff. I'm kind of glad it didn't happen. Look, there's a world where you could have had a Night Stalkers, uh, you could have had these characters integrated into this movie and then spun off to get their own thing. I'm not saying it's a bad idea. It's just the execution and the jokey nature of it just never, never got me interested enough to see it happen in fact, Wesley Snipes, he was so mad about this movie, he sued New Line. And he even sued David Goyer, saying that they changed the script, that they cut out a lot of his stuff to minimize his character and to promote the Night Stalker characters even more. And who knows, maybe Wesley is being a little bit of a prima donna. I'm not saying that's not possible, but I can understand why a guy who's been the lead character of two of your movies, this is the finale, this is the trilogy, this is the big send-off, and you want your character done right. You want your character to have a nice big arc, and I'm sure he felt like he was just there for a lot of these moments, these badass moments, and he wanted more. I can't blame him for caring about this character that he's playing. It's, it makes sense. After this, we did not get a Blade 4, though. Obviously, that didn't happen. We got a Blade TV series, which sucked. I watched it. I watched all 13 episodes. It sucked, and I'll never, ever watch it ever again. And having somebody else play Blade is not, not really what I was interested in, especially back then. So, guys, yeah, this movie sucks hard, sucks balls. Let me know in the comments below, what do you think of Blade Trinity? Do you think it sucks as well? Are you glad that we didn't get a Night Stalkers movie? Are you glad we didn't get a Blade 4? Do you want a Blade 4 with Wesley Snipes back? Or do you just want it rebooted? Do you want something different? What would you have done differently with this piece of shit Trinity film? Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Later! Later!